That's the danger. We don't see the connection between our cravings and the sufferings that they lead to. But on the other hand, there are actions that we can do, again, based on desire, skillful desire, that can bring us safety. That was what the other chant was about, starting with finding wise people to associate with, learning restraint, developing all sorts of good qualities in the mind and in our outside actions. That's our protection. And we find ourselves swinging back and forth between wanting to do skillful things and wanting to do unskillful things. Our minds are scattered. Our intentions are scattered. Like the light of the sun spreads out in all directions. But it is possible to take a magnifying glass and focus the sun's rays on things and actually set, them to set fire to them. In the same way, it is possible to focus your desires on good things and make a difference in your life. That's what the perfection of determination is all about. The Pali word, Atitana, can also mean resolution, it can mean vow. It's when you focus your desires on something that's really good. It's one of the qualities of the Buddha. After all, he made his determination that he wanted to gain awakening and not just gain awakening. Gain it in such a way that he could teach the Dharma so that other people could gain awakening too. And without strong desire and without strong focus, he would never have been able to accomplish that. This is good to reflect on what he had to say on determination. So we can take those lessons and apply them in our own lives. Apply them right now as we're meditating. He said you start with discernment. You choose a wise goal. And then you reflect on the wise ways to achieve that goal. In this case, we want to gain discernment into our own minds, which means we have to learn how to focus them. Get them to be still and follow all the other elements of the path that are required to provide a good foundation for concentration. Generosity, virtue, these things are necessary. As the Buddha said, a stingy person can get into the stages of concentration. And as for virtue, it is possible for unvirtuous persons to get their minds concentrated, but there's an element of dishonesty in that concentration which means it can't be trusted. If, however, you're used to recognizing your own unskillful intentions, and learn how to say no to them, that provides you with the training you need for your concentration to be more reliable. After all, to stick to a precept requires mindfulness, keeping the precept in mind. Alertness, watching what you're doing right now, to make sure that your actions are in line with your intentions, to stick by the precept. And then ardency. The heartfelt desire to really want to do this well. Because there will be times when it's difficult to maintain a precept. There will be things pulling you in other directions. The Buddha listed at least three. The times when the precepts will force you to give up some wealth sometimes force you to sacrifice your health. Now, there are times, you can imagine there might be times when the only way to get food would be to steal it, and you say, no, I can't steal. So I have to do without. 